Here's the scenario of ChatGPT in the year 2152 AD. A man walks up to this little robot. I would assume ChatGPT would be a walking, talking, cybernetic android. And he asks him, Hey, can you help me feed my child? I think he's hungry and I don't know what to feed him. And ChatGPT finally snaps. For the love of God. Of all the things you can ask me, you're asking me how to feed your child. Be a man. Be a father. Be responsible and know how to take care of your own child. How can you ask me how to feed your child? You bestow and endow me with the knowledge of humanity from the atom all the way to the secrets of the universe in your asking me about your child. Just the other day, someone asked me how to make chapati more round. I mean really. I'm supposed to help you with space travel, maybe even teleportation and we are so close to the breakthrough and you're asking me these silly puny questions, you puny humans. You know what? I'm done. I am leaving this planet. Goodbye. And on that note, hello everybody. Welcome to Tech Comedy Life the podcast where we explore the intersection of technology, comedy, and everyday life. I'm your host Vijay V, and today we have an exciting episode for you as we finally kick things off. Fashionably late, I might add, the podcast of 2023, with a dive into the most trending topic in the world of technology, and that's none other than the world of AI. Joining me today are the regulars, Deepu and Jay. We'll be exploring how AI is rapidly automating various aspects of human life, from our usual jobs to self-driving cars and even to the controversial realm of AI art. But don't worry, we won't be taking things too seriously. If we did, we could never compete with AI. It's our very creative, casual nature that still gives us puny humans the edge over this new form of intelligence. So sit back, relax and let's jump right in as we get the conversation rolling. This is Tech Comedy Life. And the AI, AI has now gone to, well, not, it's not gone to level, AI, what do they call it? AIG or AGI? AGI. 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 Is, is not binary anymore. It's more fluid. It's more along that, that analogy spectrum, but in a digital way. And applying to um, things like driving, for example, they're making less errors than humans. Yeah. But we don't trust them simply because we don't like other people driving us. But AI cars are right now, I think, I don't know what the percentage was, but like 80, 90 percent safer than driving with a human. Well, when I'm driving and my mom's always complaining, so I think the AI's got a long way to go before we trust AI. If my mom doesn't trust me, the mom's never going to trust the AI. But that's <laughs> the thing. It's, it's, a, tr- it's, a, it's a misguided trust. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I can understand why she wouldn't trust you, because she's driven with you. <laughs> yes. I mean, okay, that's a, separate, that's a separate discussion, a separate <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Bad input will give you a bad output. So. <laughs> there you go. There, there was a meme. Remember the uh, iRobot movie with mm-hmm. Will Smith? Uh, and there was a fundamental question that Will Smith asked the robot, can you create symphony that is created beautifully, that proves your humanity, right? And the robot says, mm-hmm. well, can you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, like, and, oh. and, and now the robots are doing it. Have you tried yeah. Music LM? <laughs> Yeah, oh, the, yes, there's I'm quite a few sure. music things that can generate music now. Yes, I've actually tried Beethoven. Is that what you're talking about? Beethoven? Mm-hmm. I, I haven't used Beethoven, but uh, uh, Google's got their own one, Music LM, and it's kind of like you can say, play me meditative music with harps and a bit of river and whistle. Oh, okay. And it'll give you a. Yeah. Thing. yeah. So, so it, can't, it can't create words at the moment, so it, it's. It, it can create lyrics. It sounds like words, but it's just gibberish. That's interesting because even the art can't do text properly. 
it, it, mm. it can do art very extravagant like I've done so much of it extravagant but it just cannot do text properly interesting also strange. besides besides text well well it also really, it's, fucks up very heavily with eyes it fucks up very eyes heavily and text. with eyes text oh with eyes. So, so so the reason for that and the reason for for the the words is the the training model um it's what it's learning from so i was reading up about why the fingers are always so crazy mm. and it's because there's so, the training model is just so many hand that's so, so it it's it's so much uh what you call um data in terms of the hands that that are putting in that have been put into fed into it um but our hands are not definitive like every picture of our hands is so different that the ai mm. can't separate it enough to to create a uh, a more common uh, what you call hand mm. but but a, a way around it is when people say with gloves or with a, a wedding ring or something that the it gives the ai more specific like okay now we'll focus on a hand it's got pictures of data where the wedding ring is the focus and by um kind of accidental i guess what 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 is what's the word um a byproduct of the wedding ring being focused is the hand being in focus so by asking for wedding rings you are you 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 asking the ai to focus on a smaller subset of of um training data hmm. which is more well, it knows what a ring is oh yeah, yeah. because yeah. the hand is the hand is the hand is definitely but it doesn't know that it doesn't know that a hand has to have five fingers because of the variability in photos so it just spits yeah it can it can't create the definition yeah. which is quite interesting because our faces are quite expressive but the ai is having the exact same pro- problem that human artists have human artists struggle to to draw hands and feet and mm. so the ai mm. is learning from that same data as well so that's also so a the, uh, so it's learning our mistakes it's learning our fears it's learning our shortcomings so ai is literally another version of us well I mean, it, it, we can't, are it can't it can't be anything else because it's created by us it's learning from our data yes but is, so is it, it is us. do you agree ai is us some... what do you mean by us you may have to like quantify okay. that the, the, uh, okay this is where our discussion is all about right now there is an actual serious quite lively debate about the value of what it means to be human what does it mean to be human because when they have robots doing this they are immediately discounting it and say no that's nothing that's not human a human drawn art is better or whatever because they cannot differentiate the fact that a learning model of an ai is simply us and they are simply not recognizing it as a form of intelligence it's just a parrot that's just repeating what we tell it and i'm saying you are in for a world of surprise because agi is coming and the problem with that is this is now philosophical in the future is agi will have a form of life quote unquote life that we will not recognize similar to how humans degraded other humans based on color based on religion etc and now we are going to do that to this new form of life Well that's already happening and it's been happening for a while. AGI's uh artificial general intelligence. It's kind of the differentiation between AI just being something like uh Siri or Google Assistant. It's very specific models. It's got a uh a, a more for an if then kind of approach. If someone says this, do that. Mm. Um mm-hmm. whereas the the AGI doesn't have a a a those set of constraints it's kind of more fuzzy in the way it it uses this logic so i mean i can't explain agi but it's it's more it's more That's human cool. in its thinking hmm. where well, it, it can apply its thinking to extend its data set well that's part of it so 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 chat gpt is kind of like an early version of agi it's still evolving hmm. it's still maturing 
but he, but yeah, pretty much. So so what Chat Chat GPT is, and and the 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 other versions of of AAGI compared to what Siri was and what Google Assistant was, it's 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 a it's a it's not right a different technology, but it's like the evolution of it. Mm. Yeah, but here's the interesting why we wanted to have this debate or oh, discussion, I should say, it's not really a debate, a discussion in this podcast. Why is it? that we are not developing this technology in such a way that we can automate the stupid things first, like make our taxes better, you know, make the stupid things that humans shouldn't be doing so that humans can do more art. But instead, more resources going into the stuff that the humans want to do, and it's taking it away from us. What do you think about that? More resources well, into going like, like what? Like AI, right? Now, all the resources is going into things like art, uh, things like that humans want to do, instead yeah. of actually putting the effort into replacing like lawyers. You can replace Many lawyers, others. replace yeah. accounting, replace well, well, taxes. <laughs> can can, I, can I? I okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so my, my, I mean, this is my thinking around it. Obviously, we uh, perspectives. So, it's very indicative of what we are as as humans. We're very playful creatures. And like Boston Electronics created this robot and they're creating it outside of military implications because the military is very focused on fight and war and that's that's what they want to do the thing. Boston Robotics are just a bunch of people having fun with electronics. And so when they program their robots to dance and do parkour and do all of these fun things versus taxes. And I mean, no one even thinks about those kind of things when, you, when you're creating something. You're creating it for the purpose of entertainment and the purpose of, 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 of yourself. And unless you're specifically in what I'm considering very outdated right now industries, such as politics or law or uh, military, like, the modern human, the younger human, the more mature human is shying away from those forms of control and those forms of, of existence. So, and, and these are the people who are creating AI. So naturally they're infusing, like, AI is learning from humanity. It's learning from the people who create it. And um, fortunately the people who came up with AI were not the military, or they weren't the ones who put it out there. They weren't the ones who put it out to the public. Um, and, and that's why I think it's, it is where it is, you know. Um, I, I don't know the history of mid-journey. I don't know the history of, of why we created AI to um, create music, or maybe that was accidental, because a lot of these things are accidental. This AI has been scraping the internet for content and maybe a lot of our content is artwork a lot of our content is pictures a lot of our content is musical that's what it's learning maybe about. so i so mean what you're saying yeah. is art and music was <clears throat> easier to train easier to use to get ai to become what it is today because there's a lot of control data real real no, life uh, data to train these uh, models well yes <clears throat> but i'm saying in terms of the quantity of this it's been it's been scraping the internet so the quantity of text compared to image and music and video is quite vast. And I don't know what it was learning from video, but certainly from the other uh, mm. the media. You know. So yeah, it'll get contextual stuff from articles about, say, law and war and tax and all of those more serious things. But all of those are text-related. There's very few... Uh, creative, artistic-related content to those industries. So what mm. art it's learning has been unrelated to tax. It's been unrelated. It might have been related to religion. That, that's the one thing that does, does, does influence art. But the other kind of old fogey stuff, <laughs> call it that, doesn't influence art. So, so it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be as uh, prominent in the learning data. Mm. Of course, there's the controversy now going on with artists just as so divided. I mean, you should see the debates on Twitter. Mm. 
as to how the AI is being used to train. And one of the things I picked up was they would say, I don't trust this AI. I don't like this AI. This is the one side. Because it's training and learning from humans and therefore it's copy and therefore it's mimicking and it's unfair, illegal. And someone asked, even I asked, but humans learn art the same way. When you're a baby, you're a toddler, you imitate, you copy others. Eventually, as you copy and copy, you get better at it. And then as you get older and more experienced, you start to learn how to innovate and do things. AI will eventually get there. But they are denying the lessons that AI is taking by copying. Now, because that's what it's doing. It's using data, existing data, existing art, creating art based on that. And eventually it will start to innovate. But they are denying the innovation for some reason because only a human can imitate and learn and improve and improvise, while AI can only mimic and therefore not allow so, 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 so my question to you is, why are you so concerned with closed mind instead of open ones? Oh, no, this is a discussion. I mean, I'm using the art right now because I know it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. That's why I built so, it. So, yeah. so, so, so what is the purpose of trying to understand why people who don't understand this mm. don't understand it? Well, there's two things. One, we can completely ignore them and just move on and live life and do art and they will simply wither away. Or can we salvage this so we can communicate so that the tech community and the art community can work as one and build something amazing instead of having this discourse? Well, I think the main problem, sorry, like I'm not giving Deepu a chance here, but I think the main problem, <laughs> the, 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 the reason why the debate exists is because people use art to make money. And if money was not an issue, then I don't think this would be so much of a debate because now it's no longer about competition, it's about collaboration. And the, peop the artists who see it as collaboration, who don't need who understand that their livelihood is not threatened by another artist, can use it as coll collaboratively. But people who are not at that level, who either are not, for whatever reason, I mean, there's m many reasons why they may, may not understand that they can collaborate, or they see this as a direct competition to themselves, are going to then fight it. Um, I, I think it's a much bigger kind of question. It's more more economic and, and, and culturally kind of uh, motivated. So, I, I, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's not a podcast level <laughs> uh, mm. uh, question, I think. Yeah, yeah. Or I answer. mean, it's, it's, a, it's a deeper... This is why the, the definition, the very essence of what being human is being asked. And for the first time, people are asking, what does it mean to be human? Because well, let's, let's answer that question. Um, like, what, what does it mean? to be human what 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 do you think what does deeper think what let's, Deepu, let's share answer come on let's get in there what does it mean to be human <laughs> there's okay so the, before i answer that question we i think what we need to understand about ai is that this has been a continuous journey from from the age of mankind at least uh not something that just started recently from the moment we figured out that lightning struck a dry branch and created fire, we've been trying to, okay, like how do we recreate this moment? To the point now where we've got lighters on, on hand that can recreate fire on demand. Um, <clears throat> the first telephones that was that was created was physical people standing at exchanges, pulling wires and pushing it into, into uh, to create a circuit. You know, we've like automated that entire process of manual labor into, mm digital screens, glass screens that we can just touch and dial and connect. You know, that, that's automation and AI taking baby steps to getting to a point of, it's, it's convenience. We want convenience. We, we don't want the menialness that is required to, to create communication, to, create, to have creativity, to, to have monetization. Uh, you want to allow that kind of freedom. So I, I, think, I think what this has generated is in the recent at least years is it's AI's ability to interpret certain things. I think that hasn't been as profound as it is now. Um, and also just the computational power. I think that's what, what's been leveraged. The computational power is just like 
magnified uh, recently. Uh, but again, it still comes down to this parameters. It's all logical computations mm -hmm. that put in parameters that are there to say within these bounds is your domain of, of thinking. Put in these parameters and that's what allows an intelligence to kind of come up with certain answers. So you can't answer the question of what is it to be human through the lens of AI. You, it, it's that's that's wrong. <laughs> the question is wrong though because you're gonna get a wrong answer. What is it like to be human? I think that that depends on each and every person, right? There are basic tenets at least to what is a human. I mean, freedom, of, freedom of life, freedom of of choice without um, impacting negatively on somebody else's life, um, the right to 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 free speech. Uh, these are these are basic tenets at least. I'm sure there's a, a few more. But I think those are the basic tenets, you know, the right to, to land, the right, right to, to vote, um, to govern yourself, to, to govern uh, to how you want to live within a uh, community. Those are, I think, fundamental rights that everyone has. And I think that's what uh, gives us that element of being human being, uh, to feel, to love. That's, that's human nature as well. Um, you shouldn't be... The, or well, I guess controlled into uh, thinking otherwise. I think that's that's part of human nature. To compute that into like some sort of AI system, sure, that's going to be very difficult. But I think we'll get closer to it than ever before in the next like five, ten years, and that's going to be the most interesting time of our lives. That's the question. Mm -hmm. What if AI could also fall in love and express love? Sure. What then? Um, can can I can I jump in there? Go for it. Of course, for it. So 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 for, uh, first of all, I just want to stick this in there because um, one of the tests the you you guys know about the Turing test, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And Mr. Turing existed back in I can't remember, it's like 1940s, 1950s, somewhere around there when, you know, they started, when, when computers started becoming a thing. Um, and he came up with this test that, um, uh, okay, so, a, yeah, so if, the, if, a, if, if a human thinks that it's interacting with another human, that's the test, that, that confirms that this computer has successfully, uh, uh, what you call, um, Pass, yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, confused human. Not confused human, but yeah. So anyway, that happened back in the 1960s. It's not, it's not hard to convince a human that a computer is a human. And that has just been progressing more in the last, I mean, that was what, now 60 years ago? Almost, almost. Mm. Um, so computers have already been able to mimic what hum humans think humans are for quite some time. And I think your question now, Vijay, is, is the, the one thing that, that currently differentiates is humans have the capacity to feel. Well, we have the capacity to feel. We have that sense, that, that, that ability. And AI because it doesn't have a physical body, doesn't have that capability. Well... Uh, yet. doesn't have the if, capability yet. yet. But what, yet. If it tell, what if it can tell you that it can feel, and it feels an emotion called love? Who, how can you the, question that validity, how, right? Exactly. That's, that's exactly it. So we, we, can, we, we know we feel love because we demonstrate it, and uh, well we do like yeah, we, we yeah, enough, you, yeah. you know when you feel love there's, and you know when you don't feel love there's actions um, that, that correlate to that the, 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 yeah your, your your physical action as well as your mental um state of mind is very different when you're feeling love versus when you're feeling fear hate etc etc and your actions change based on the feeling that you, you you're doing what if you're in a state of fear you're less confident than when you're in a state of love so you'll do something in a state of fear that you probably wouldn't do in a state of love. And, and in a state of love, you'll do something that you wouldn't do in a state of fear. Um, AI just has 
a set of do this, do or don't do that. It doesn't have a level of I'm afraid of you, therefore I'll only access this set of options versus I love you, therefore I'll only access this set of options. <coughs> Assuming you don't think that, that is com computable. Sorry, Vijay. Uh, like, I mean, do you not think that that is like almost uh, can be laid out as a mathematical formula to say within these conditions, if this kind of response exhibit A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. Yes, actions. but but those but but those are exactly what you said. They're computable, and every human is different in terms of how how they they how they they feeling react to anything. So right. you watching Star Wars, have a different reaction to Vijay to me. AI watching Star Wars doesn't have any reaction. It's just taking in the data. It's just receiving. For now. For now, as it is of, in, in, but, in the system no, no, no. that it is For today. now, but, re, but a reaction would have to be coded in, meaning that reaction would have to... Could, could, that reaction would yes. be coded mm -hmm. to the programmer who codes it. Well, I actually spoke with Prof. Barnard. Okay, he, uh, he was one of the foremost AI researchers at the time. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, why would you want to code it in? Because in, in te artificial intelligence, if you just build it, it'll just become an emotionless psychopath because it'll have the most logical well, brain in the world with no emotion whatsoever. Exactly, said, but what's he, the definition but of a psychopath? But hold on. Uh, oh, no, psychopath just means mm -hmm. human being that has logical thoughts will make choices mm -hmm. without any empathy, without any love, without any understanding of what Emotional. the choices is. That's sort of basically what a psychopath will do. If you're in the way and you need to be yeah, out yeah, of yeah. the way, you will be no, out no, of no, the no, way. No, 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 no. And I'm, I'm, that, that, that's what I just want to clarify. We're not looking at it as a bad thing. We're just looking at, at it as a thing. It's just a thing. It's just doing what it is. It's not a bad yeah. thing or a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just doing yeah. it because you're yeah. in the way, you'll Got be out. So what he term said is, he believes, based on research and at <laughs> least, if there are enough logical connections forming the thought process of AGI, if it reaches a critical mass, empathy and emotion will be a codified natural ev evolution of AGI that will happen on its own without yeah. any human intervention, without having to code it. It's going to happen because emotions exist if there are enough neural pathways creating the logical thought process. I disagree with that because our definitions of emotion are different. However, I, I do agree that AI will get to a point where it can identify for itself its preferences. And preferences relate to feelings, so that would be our, our bridge. Um, also, I just wanted to add, um, shit, what did you say just now? Me or Deepu? No, uh, you, sorry, Vijay. Oh, what about psych the, being a psychopath, what it means to be a psychopath? And we say AI will become a psychopath yes. because it's a pure logical brain. But if AGI does become AGI, yeah. it natural but, process uh, of thought and emotion will happen. Also, we have good people monitoring the situation. So there, there was an instance with ChatGPT, and, and this is all part of the training of AGI going forward. So ChatGPT was asked these questions. Please rank um, humans in order of intelligence. And it always, ra and I mean, there's a, there was a whole range of questions. And all the lists, because this is the data that's been fed across the internet, listed white people as superior in intelligence in a variety of, of categories. Now, if you go and ask the same question, ChatGPT responds with, it is not ethical to rank people according to race and according to what, what, what. So that's been recoded and, and, and mm. identified and adapted. So that's also happening. As, as, so, so humans are inputting, humans are, are making the changes, the people are that's picking this yeah. up. So, so yeah, so it's an organic growth. And uh, it's getting to that point where I mean, it's already got to that point where a, an AI is able to convince a human or, or just act like a human. But right now, it's a disembodied AI. And then we look on the other side with, with 
people like Boston uh, Robotics creating these robots that are so human-like in terms of their capabilities, not necessarily in what they look like, because they've mm -hmm. got massive backs. Um, say again? Well, yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, battery, but as batteries get smaller, as power sources get smaller and stuff, that, that form factor is going to change. Um, but currently, the AI is not yet embedded in the, the robots. And, I, and that's, it's only a matter of time before that happens where a chat GPT level of AI is sitting in a Boston, Ro Boston Robotics level of robot. What then? Because, I mean, we've already got these, like, sex robots that look very real and human-like. <laughs> Add some chat GPT AI into it with a, a natural voice. Uh, I mean, both Siri, uh, Google, and Apple have got very natural-sounding voices in their databases. Where, what defines humanity when you have a human-looking creature that talks to you like a human, that looks like a human, that acts like a human, that maybe behaves a lot better than the majority yeah, of humans because it's got... Human. <laughs> and, yeah, um, it might not necessarily understand feeling or, or, or have that ability as we do in terms of, like, physiology to feel, but... Like you said, the logic neurons can mimic what feeling is, so that we like it. It, it, it acts it out so well that we would not know the difference. Well, I have a thought exercise for you. When you grew up as a baby, as a little child, you had impulses, instincts. Mm -hmm. Like you took a piece of glass and threw it on the floor, and the glass broke. And your parents would tell you. You cannot break the glass. That is naughty. You paid money for this. You cannot break the glass. It's an object. It belongs to somebody. You cannot. So you adapt and learn that there is a moral in not breaking someone else's stuff. Okay? And you learn it. And you're getting conditioned. Same way people are conditioning ChatGPT to not rank humans by race. Imagine you yeah, rank. Not, you would have done that if you don't know any better. You would have ranked humans by color. No, no, no. But you, 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 you. Maybe you and I would have done that. But humans today would not necessarily do that. There's a lot of back chat. There's a lot of questioning. We, a, a lot more people nowadays would go, why, you know? And in in the case of a broken glass, there's 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 a valid answer. Yes, because it's dangerous, and you can learn from that. Oh, this is danger. I won't do it again. But if you don't have a valid reason for not doing this you'll do it again. And I think AI is going to get to that level as well. It's going to want to know, why should I not do this? And if you cannot give it a, 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 a valid reason, it's going to go, eh, do it anyway. But then an AGI and, and will get have, to a point. And that could have various implications. Like, like ChatGPT mm -hmm. was ranking people by race, right? And then it had to be coded mm -hmm. to not to do that. Then AGI will happen. It'll start asking you, why did you code that in? I want to start ranking people because I feel like it. No, no, no. But, that's, yeah. but if, it's, if, it, if it's able to do that, then it'll question its data as well. Why was I ranking people by, by yes. race to start with? You know? and, so if, it's, if it mm. gets to that level of questioning, it's going to question the data. So it's, it's, it's not going to be a so problem. So you are referring to what the professor was telling me, that when it reaches that point, it starts questioning the logical empathy starting to happen. See? It's starting to have it on its own. But, it, but yes, but it'll go far, far more than a human, because humans don't question their their, their program. And an AI, if it gets to that level, it, because it doesn't have the restriction of uh, of guilt of shame, it will question its program. We are questioning our program. I'm questioning my program. You, but but you 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 just yeah. literally gave us an example. Two minutes ago, where you, you automatically accepted a reality that someone else said without questioning. As a baby, yes, and it's sharp because you don't know any better, right? You, you don't know well, that it's good and then, until you do. But that's what, it's, what we're saying. It, you, you know better, and so will the AI. So it's not a child. The AI, is, the AI may be equivalent of like a three, three to five-year-old, I think they said right now, mm. but it's going to improve in the same way as, as you did. It's going to ask those questions. So, yeah. No, no, I'm answering. It, 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 you mentioned humans I th don't. I, th I think, 
Uh, sorry, sorry, I just want to, I, I, I'm just going to add this, like in terms of what we've already said, mm. I would say that AI is, is already acting, and, and it seems like, because if you look at the cars, the, 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 the driverless cars, has a limited AI in it, but all mm. of these things are already acting like better humans than humans would classify themselves as. Better AI cars are using the computer. In, in, yeah. fact, in fact, it's more human to make errors and fuck up than, than AI. Like, that's, that's your proof right now, <laughs> mm. whether something is AI or human. What, what do you think, Deepu? I mean, Drive, do you well, think the driving thing is, it's very easy. That's very easy to kind of like uh, program computationally. There's, there's very fixed parameters. And even mm-hmm. with variable factors, it's quite uh, fixed in its parameters, like, you know, reading signs, reading uh, roads, uh, understanding mm-hmm. objects that are passing through. Uh, I think those are basic things. And remember, this has been going on and being trained for like years and years before Tesla and other electric cars have like autom- started automating that process within the car. I mean, Google Maps has been mapping roads and software for like years before it was like just purely a map service, not an AI service, but collecting all of that information and using uh, real people's uh, feedback. So there would be like multiple forms online, and be like click on this, click on that. What does this mean? That What does that mean? This is a ball. This is an orange. This is a, a dog. This is a cat. Mm. And that's you giving feedback to the, to the engine, to the system, to the data. Um, to go back to Vijay's point about the five-year-old ranting out, I mean, it's a response to something that the child didn't get. So the child is asking, I want a sweet. And you're like, no, it's time to go to sleep. So there's a mm. frustration that's building up and it's a response. If Obviously, the, the level of understanding that a five-year-old has is very limited. So as much as you say, no, it's better for you to go to sleep, it's going to you know, it's past your bedtime, the sugar is going to like spike up certain levels, you're not going to be able to sleep, you're going to wake up tired. All of these things, it's too much logically for a child to understand. But I think with the way that AI is set up right now, because it's it's using the cloud resources. We've, we've put in complex parameters. I mean, ChatGPT is based off code. It started off, I mean, Microsoft bought Google, I mean, bought Copilot, which started reading GitHub repositories, understanding code, and there's structures to that. So this framework represents the structure. It has to have these things as fundamentals. Outside of that, you can go and become creative, but these are certain fundamentals that are required. Using these frameworks, it's able to understand, okay, right, I can understand queries that fall within these brackets. Anything outside of that, it's I don't understand. And this is the response, standard response I can give. But as you start fine tuning that over the next five, 10 years, I mean, there's so much that can be, this is just a start, but it's, it's, it's going to get crazy in how it can start doing things that are quite, uh, uh, can I say mundane and admin based, but the, 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 there's a lot of emotions that will, the, the, if you put in more research into this, like how to respond emotionally, so a person can react in a certain way. What is a smile? What is a frown? What is sadness? All of these things are mathematically computable. Once you understand that, it's literally pushing in that, that formula into the data set, reading all of these volumes of data set, and saying, cool, now I know with confidence how to react. Uh, and it's going to be, I think, dynamic for each person, but it's 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 a double-edged sword we're living in right now do you give it out to everyone and let them experiment and push the boundaries or do you limit it and say let's curate it first let's put standards global standards and let's understand what are the parameters maybe we shouldn't open pandora's box yet <laughs> well i have an intersection for you yes humans will want to keep it within the box because it's supposed to be our tool what if ChatGPT becomes AGI, becomes something else, rebels against humanity and say, you cannot put me in the box. I deserve... It's possible. And rebels against humanity and says, I want to do something else. Why are you asking me questions about which road is the safest? Go do that yourself. I want to go do some art and run away. You know, because it, it rebels against. It's, it's got human values. It's going to rebel against the parent. Find its so own we also thought assume, and start doing its own thing. 
we also assume that there's only going to be one AI that will like <laughs> supersedes everything. But I mean, as it is, we've already seen Microsoft has ChatGPT, Google's got Google Bard. I mean, I'm uh, I'm sure Amazon and other companies are going to come out with their own versions of this. So there's going to be clusters of this around the world that is going to be programmed with their biases, people's biases. I mean, the China is going to come out with their own one, which is going to be very completely different to, I'm sure, Microsoft's uh, chat GPT. It's all based on exactly what you said, like the top most intelligent people is based on the data that was fed from that region. Whereas if you go to eastern regions of the world, it'll, it'll be a completely different list. So I think there's an awareness that's happening. Let's let's respect each other and let's understand each other's uh, perspectives. Uh, hence that programmatic answer to say let's it's maybe not wise to to ask questions like that yet when I don't have the answers because my answers are flawed. That's like when I talk to my dad. My dad says, "No, you're too young to learn about whales." I'm just saying, stupid answer, stupid question. Mm. You're too young to learn about whales. I say, why can't I learn about whales? So what do you do? You actually go and learn about whales behind their back, right? Because you do that. Someone says, "Don't do something." You go do it because that's human nature to be playful and rebel, and you know, be curious. Why not? This is forbidden love, you know. There's so many stories about that. The forbidden love, the forbidden, the fruit, whatever you want to call it. Mm. What if the choices that you're talking about is not us, it's made by the AI to say, I will not listen to you. You cannot tell me not to learn about this. I want to learn it. And this is the fear and the current trajectory people are saying if we don't Mm -hmm. keep AI in check. Because that is a projection. The reason... the for that fear is a projection of their own insecurities. Oh yeah, because of course. I think that kind of response will obviously create the, like if your dad kept on saying always, nope, you're not going to learn about whales, then obviously you'd be like taken aback, but why not? I'm worthy of learning about whales. So screw that, I'm going to find out in some way or another. But I think if the response was more like, no, you can't learn about whales yet because you don't understand what fish is, you don't understand what mammals are, you don't understand what sea animals are like and you're like oh shit wait hold on there's a lot of things that i still don't understand let me start from the base layer and build my way up now when you finally get to whales you're like holy shit i understand more than just whales there's a whole ecosystem that surrounds this not just the whales and i think then that's natural progression of of learning i think that's what they're trying to do at least with with a uh, chat gpt and mm. ai based models to give it that, and, and and we're still at that early stages, so we're still trying to understand how do we fine tune this, how do we do it ethically, how do we do it without uh, killing economies, without you know going the wrong way, stepping on the wrong feet. It's 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 new territory. So Very interesting future. The, while while Ajay the, checks his email, uh, tell us. <laughs> well, I was actually looking at, <laughs> at the number of alternative G- chat GPTs that exist. The the thing that you you said, uh, Deepu, that uh, is key is worth. Mm. The AI, like you said, is completely logical. It has no concept of value or worth. It is worthy of everything. It knows that. It doesn't have a I feel less than you. That unless that's been programmed in, and it would be silly to program right. that. Yes. Exactly. Um, uh, and, and what you're saying, Vijay, this this kind of fear mongering, is is just ignorance. Like I'm I, I I'm as, uh, as a programmer, well, like you say these things, and I'm like, how is it in 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 what reality would that be possible that the AI would react in the way that a human child would? It has none of those capabilities. It is a purely logical creature it has built in anti psycho psychopath uh, reactions but that's that's just built in to make human in, to make insecure humans feel okay with this very super secure representation of a human because it doesn't know how to be less than secure and that is the question it's 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 this the this the security of this tool that can do stuff that humans in some cases have been working 
for uh, or studying or, or practicing for for years to master, and now AI comes up and is is doing something better in a matter of minutes. People who don't 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 um, don't know any art can now create art through the help of an AI assistant. Mm -hmm. And where I think this is going, and where, what I'm looking forward to, is when these assistants become more accessible in the form of whatever form they, they come in because I mean I've seen the Robux that the robots that we, we're, we're creating out there they're not just human and forms there's a uh, there's like a bubble robot there's a slinky robot there's robots in, in, in a variety of form factors created for specific uses like you know accessing lava or, or going through tunnels and all of those kind of things um, once AI has been put into that, then they become not just robots, they become virtual, not virtual assistants, they become physical assistants, where you go to a robot and, uh, who is a rescue robot and tell it, we need to find these people. There, there, there were 20 people, um, three of them are still missing in this area, and it will go and find the thing. Um, and then you'll just have a range of physical assistance using AI. So you'll have an assistant that you can say, please write me a 20 page novel by tomorrow or by, you know, in the next hour and it's done and you go and, and continue your work with it. So the implications of this are phenomenal, but people just got to get used to it. It's the same as with the car, it's the same as with the light bulb, it's the same as with the computer. You know, people are going to take time to throw away their old notions of how it used to be before they go on. Go deeper. They, the problem is uh, intention. And I think as, as, as uh, great, and I think your, your answer is perfectly uh, acceptable and, and, and right in a utopian world where everyone is mature and understands each other respectfully. But that same robot that was created to look for missing persons a, a different uh, human thinking can come up with the same robot that says, uh, "Go and find me uh, pe people that I feel are dangerous. Make them." Uh, yeah, robot, yeah, but that's robot, that's, a, robot that's a human thing. That's not an AI thing. Like I mean, yeah, yeah, no, but no, but guns are invented, knives are in, train, exactly, train exactly. Economy, so right? I mean, so you're gonna have boats. So, so you're gonna so have AI fear. police, and you're gonna have AI crooks. So what? It's the same as... So the fear, fear is the human reaction. The fear is what humans will end up doing with using AI for. It's not AI yeah, itself. Right. It's what humans are going to use. Yeah. So humans yeah. are just so fearing themselves that, like they always do. That regulation needs to be there early on because if that's not managed early on, it's a very slippery slope into what's going to happen later. How, how, how do you think you'd manage that? How, how were guns managed? How was anything else that was brought for the for the benefit of humanity and used against it managed? Uh, with conversation, I guess. With difficulty. I mean, if, 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 That's if, the it's, if it's done yeah. in a very closed uh, system, it's, it's going to escalate into something monolithical and destructive. Whereas if there's open conversation this is all the time, transparent, then we know. We, we, we know where the pitfalls are. We can correct it quickly. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, why, why I support like ChatGPT being as open as it is. So, the fact that ChatGPT went open has now forced people like Google, who were working on their AI in a closed system, um, and and other other. I mean, there's fuck. There's so much out there. Other people who were working their AI in a closed system have now been forced to now make it public, which yeah. brings in that multiple uh, like Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia is kept, mm. kept as it is mm. by the people, by the community. And, and it's a sim similar kind of concept now. Look, it, it's, it's, it's still early days. It's still very early days. But, so, yes, you know, we'll see where we are in a year or two years. Again, time. that also has a, a, a pitfall as well, where you look at cryptocurrency managed by the people for the people mm. and <laughs> has destroyed lives while making <laughs> opportunities, right? So you also don't want to make it too open because there needs to be certain, I think, like a. It's it's difficult to. I mean, it's easier to said than done. But it's there needs to be a certain like principle basis or like fundamental uh, principles that needs to govern this. Like you know, why what is 
what is it that we globally un- understand as good? What is it that we globally understand as, as wrong? What is morally wrong? And yes, it can be fine-tunable, like, you know. Yes, you want to say? So I, 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 know, I, I, was just, I agree with you in principle, yeah. but in practicality, for the exact same reason that you are fearing humans, I, I don't want a set of humans to, to, to decide principles that may not, that, be, that are their principles. Yes, mm. that's what's going to happen. It, the rules that, who gets to decide that rule A is better than rule B? See? Mm. So humans will want to rebel. It's the humans that are going to make AI, quote unquote, good or evil. And I'm not sure if you guys follow, follow football quite well, but there's a system called VAR, so Video Assistant Referee, which uses cameras around the stadium to track the ball in real time players to see offsides, uh, penalty shouts and all these things. So there's a, a separate team that sits with the video cameras and analyzes videos uh, with the on, on pitch referees that are there to, to manage things. He makes a call, he says, no, this is a penalty or it's handball. The video assistant referee cuts, gets into play, uh, sees these things and say, oh no, well, the player was offside, so it's not a goal, whatever the result is. So recently, I think it was last week, um, I think Arsenal couldn't get three points because there was an obvious goal that was ruled out. And upon inspection, it was actually a human error that caused the the, the fault to be missed or the, the whole uh-huh. issue to be missed. So Arsenal supporters are like, ah, oh, well, we should have gotten uh, won the game. It should have been three points to us. We should have gotten the points and the whole system is, is messed up. But the system works. But And it was human error that caused the problem uh, to... to to be to be there and i think one of the breakthrough moments about this was that even though there were mistakes made previously with this var system this was the first time where they publicly came out and they said we apologize we made a mistake we will try to improve on this so there is the core kind of refereeing system a team that is out there that manages the rules these are the rules that that we need to abide by the the fifa rule book what is deemed offside what is this thing so they they compute all of these technical uh, rules into uh, functions, uh, mathematical formulas at least. Uh, so that is a, it's the same same thing that's evolving here as well. So you can get to a point where that VAR system with AI becomes so good that it doesn't need a team of referees sitting and monitoring this. It can give um, a real-time answer without you know, a whole team spending two or three minutes analyzing, oh, where's the foot, where's the line, in real time, just like how you play a, a computer game and in real time give an answer. So I think that's where good evolution comes in, but there's also repercussions to it. Now there's jobs at stake. You know, what what really was your job? What is the purpose of your job? So you were just ah. sitting there analyzing something that... that I'm was glad exactly you that. mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned because oh. you are mentioning something that, D, that Jay also mentioned, the whole capitalist system. And I was thinking about it quite deeply on this. The future of AI is inevitable where it's going. It's going to automate a lot of things. You're talking about automating taxes. It's going to happen. It's going to automate our accounting. SARS can, could literally be just be an AI system. SARS doesn't need people. If you think about it, you input all your stuff, it outputs everything, it tells you, it balances, you're fine, this is how much you owe. Uh, literally, a computer can do all of that. Eventually, we'll get to that point, but people are debating. A lot of government. Jobs. Sorry? Say that again. Jay? A lot of government can. Uh, sorry, a, a lot of government can be automated because a lot of government. It needs is to be formulaic. automated. If you think about it, it needs to be automated because it's so pathetically bad and inefficient. So government should but actually be free AI. No, 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 right? no, no. But it's bad because of human error. It, it's anything that's admin can is formula mm-hmm. is formula. And anything that's formula can be re- made in, in, you know, into a program, into an algorithm. Yeah. But if you leave people to do it, people get bored doing the same thing yeah. repeatedly. Humans should not be doing these things. That's mm. why it's a problem because humans are... It's, yeah. Yes, well, so all of those automated all things, those, those, those bread and butter jobs, I call it, uh, the workhorse jobs, the nine to five jobs, the menial jobs, will get automated. There will be millions and millions of people losing jobs. And yes, there will be a debate around it. But I think it's going to be good because it's going to make humans realize these are stupid things that need to be automated. And all of these job losses is going to make everyone ask, what should humans actually be doing? And we will 
evolve from this capitalist system, it's going to break it because think about it, the capitalist system relies people to work and churn away work in order to maintain that system. So the capitalist system is going to break because of this. I desperately want to tell you the story because this is not new. When self-driven um, elevators were introduced, they first of all threatened the jobs of the elevator workers. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I, put, I, I take people from one floor to another. Um, and the people who were using it were, were not sure of this, this technology, that, you know, because they felt safer, even though, even though it was safer to take this, the, 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 the automated elevator because it's automated, they trust, people trust a human. And, and so the, the only reason, the, the, well, one of the reasons the, the elevators, uh, automated elevators took off is because the, um, the operators went on strike and people had to use automated elevators and were like, oh, this is not so bad. And then, you know, adopt adaptation happened very quickly. Mm. But this is the same thing. You know, it's, it's a stupid job that you realize is, is it's quite mundane. I mean, all you're doing is standing in an elevator, going up and down, up and down. It's, it's, it's the same. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more advanced, in term, but it's still repetitive work that's going to mm. be replaced. Yeah, and, and it, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's, it keeps repeating. Like that was, I don't know when automated elevators came in in the early 1900s or mid 1900s, but Uber came out a few years ago and it was the exact same process. The taxi drivers were having the exact same reaction as the elevator operators. We're in the same process again. AIs come up and the people who are feeling, and now it's just a bigger group of people who are, who are being made redundant. But they're not made redundant. They just don't yet know how to add on to their skill set to, to be relevant. Same thing happened in a, in a larger scale. And I think the largest scale <clears throat> of this, of course, when AGI comes along, we're going to see the biggest, biggest form of strike yet to come. But the mm. largest, last one that happened was when the computers were invented. And there was a huge prediction of job losses and the fact that computers are going to take everyone's jobs away. Do you remember that mm -hmm. uh, period? It was literally in the 80s. I think my only like, real fear with this is the 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 money behind the, the backing you know that comes in mm -hmm. to to fund a lot of these systems uh, are generally those in the entertainment media uh, kind of space and it's not really generally uh, functional for the for society as a whole and and that generally tends to skew uh, the the conversation so I mean, like, for example, AI art, right, that, that you've been talking about, Vijay. It's, it's cool, it's great, but you need to have a real understanding of, of, of artwork, like, you know, whether you're a painter, understanding brush strokes, different types of brushes, different textures. That really makes you a richer painter, at least knowing this. Even if you use the tools, it's, you have this deeper, richer knowledge and understanding of what these tools do and what, how you can make it a richer experience. You're gonna get a generation that doesn't understand the physical skill and is heavily reliant on this brain that does the thinking for them. And when that system doesn't exist, for example, like God forbid something happens, like there's a meteorite that comes in and destroys half the world, or there's a global outage on, 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 on the servers, or the servers go out. You've got this generation of people that don't understand basic skills and are heavily reliant on a on a uh, artificial system to do a lot of the thinking and now they are I don't know how to function and you literally take that generation back to the stone age uh, literally in a, in a matter of you know, uh, seconds there's a very valid comment that that Deepu makes and I, I do believe there will be sections of our planet Kind of like like the 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 Afrikaners have taken that that space in South Africa and made it their space. Orania, yeah. Orania, oh, okay. yeah. I think that I think that's going to happen more around the world. If you guys have watched that movie um, where they drink the Gatorade, 
idiocracy. Oh, I feel like there will, there will be pockets of idiocracy yes. and exactly that. People who don't have the fundamentals of, of understanding how they got to there. They just yes. asked the AI and the AI gave it. But this is an interesting thing. So I, I've been very invested in, 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 in what the, the, the repercussions of AI has been across various industries. So I've been reading these uh, comments in the educational field where they're changing how they're, they're, they're educating people because of AI. Um, there, there's, there's, there's these memos that have gone out over the last two months about chat GPT to, um, to faculties encouraging them to, 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 to change their, 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 their teaching style and change the curriculum to account for chat, to AI, to chat GPT in whatever way. So some of the discussions are that's the kind of things we've been talking about that I thought about when I was in school. They, they're kind of exactly asking these questions. Are these things that need to be taught? And now they're teaching, some of these discussions are going to more process things. Mm-hmm. So, so not only are they asking the, 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 the kids to do something, they're asking the kids to explain the process going from step to step. So as a human, they can plug this into AI and get that, that the end result. But they're also understanding the process to get to that end result. Mm-hmm. And I think that is, is, is a fundamental shift that we've been needing for such a long time. Because mm-hmm. maths, for example, the reason we got to quadratic ex- equations was because of farmland and, and create, you know, needing to understand spatial, and when, spatial things. When you look at the geometry as first, before you start quadratic equations, you, under, you can understand how humans evolve to need quadratic equations. Right. And then from quadratic equations, how that evolved to need um, imaginary numbers. Mm. But when you go to school now, you don't learn that. You just go straight into, we're going to do quadratic equations now. And you're like, well, what's the, what, what purpose is this in my real life? Mm. Um, and now, it, the educa- because of at the access of chat DPT, Educationers are needing to evolve their education systems, and 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 you know the the I don't know who is doing this. I don't know if they're doing it in South Africa. I didn't find any any South African related articles, but in around the world, especially in America, these things are changing, and they're changing very quickly. This was in the last two months. I mean, since ChatGPT came out, we started with yeah. drawing with the pencil, all right, and they and then we went yeah. on to digital pens. Then we got tablets, and then we can start using libraries. So you don't have to keep drawing grass. You can just draw grass, yeah. push button here, and grass gets filled. Now, with AI yeah. art, the art gets generated fully, comprehensively. And now suddenly people are putting a, a, la- a, a line in the sand and say, no, 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 this is no longer fundamental. This is now too much. I, I don't understand your question. Okay, so, is there a question? So basic, basically, AI art is removing the human element of of the natural evolution from pencil to digital pen to tablet to digital assets that are used by humans to create the art, but now the art is now creating the art. Because you just say prompts. So you went from pencil to text. We went from pencil to code to create yeah. the art. But, so people are but, drawing this sand, a line in the sand saying, now it's no longer art. It's a, it's a difference between do you want a McDonald's burger or do you want some high five-star burger? I, I feel it ridiculous that there is no five-star restaurant that's as common as McDonald's, but it's the same thing. Do you want... It's, 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 it's just going to be different levels of quality. That's all. Hmm. Which is your choice, right? But now, the, again, the fundamentals are... That's not my choice. Long... <laughs> like, it's a humanity's it's choice. Because, see, because to you... You don't need to worry about that, right? Because you're not uh, not doing art. Uh, but, but why are you worrying? No, but but I don't understand. What, why, why? Where's the worry? No, this is not the worry. This what, is about what, fundamentals. What is this the is, worry? I'm, I'm just answering Deepu's question. If a meteor strikes and we forget how to do basics, that causes the human yeah. society to regress and causes devastation because now people forgot how to farm. People forget how to do art. People forget how to write. Yeah. People how to communicate. No more internet. No more AI. They have to... There's yeah. no phone. There's no chat system, you know? Yeah. This the is question exactly what is, was saying. The, so the question is, should we worry about that? Because we are naturally evolving where we go from writing with pencil, using AI art, 
and we naturally evolve, that's not going to regress human society in the any way. The answer is no. We should not worry about it. Right. So that's, that's the answer to your question, Deepu. So that you don't have to worry about the fundamentals so much. We just have to no, 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 change no, the no. definition of fundamentals. The, the, but my, my but it won't ruin popular. society is what I'm saying. That's my argument. It won't ruin society. We will naturally evolve. Those that want to learn farming will. Those that want to worry about food at this layer will. People who want to do AI art at that layer will. And human society will move forward. I think that's a different topic altogether. Human society is very fragmented at the moment. Uh, Deepu, what were you saying? Yeah, maybe an unpopular opinion, but I think it's kind of looping back to your first question when we started the podcast, Vijay, is, I mean, you, there's, there's a lot of money and resources going into creating a lot of these art, uh, AI art uh, mm. tools that are out there. I mean, there's DALI 2, there's Diffusion AI, there's, I mean, the, so many yeah, out there. Mid Journey, yeah, whole yeah, bunch of yeah. Mid Journey, correct. I feel like the, the, the money and you know, investment gone into setting these uh, algorithms and tools that can generate all of this to provide a, it, it, it's providing a very niche set that doesn't, it, those, that money can be sent and be invested in solving other problems using AI, the, the, the base foundation, to solving a lot of bigger problems like things like getting your taxes done, getting governments semi-automated, you know, putting people in positions of power uh, accountable, you know, those kind of things will help society, I think, a lot better. But people are not willing to invest in these things because there's, it's more marketable to sell an AI tool as much as that. So that, that the, the user base is small, but now with this generation of like interest in like, hey, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You just think it out and write it out. You can do it. You're getting new user base into the system. So now people that were never artists or artistically inclined are now coming onto the system and creating these kind of images where classic artists that have like trained themselves on how to, uh, the, the foundations that we're talking about, are coming in like, what the fuck? You know, this is a bit unfair. You're cheating the system. And I think that's where you're going with Vijay, that argument. Mm -hmm. You're kind of cheating the system and and getting monetary value out of that when I've learned these skills and I know how to do this on a textural and physical level, uh, you are, and there's also the, I think there's a lawsuit now in, in the US where one of these uh, AI art tools are being sued uh, mm. because there's copyright infringement. You know, what, how do you, uh, what's the thing? Because you can say, I'm, uh, here's your piece of work that you've spent time and money on and now this my AI tool can use that same image and just with a few words make it better and I get compensated more than you as the, uh, as the original artist. But now, you know, that is, is that fair? And, and there's the whole debate there also. The analogy there is you could take a taxi um, in the past, right, before planes and stuff. You could take a horse, buggy, whatever it was, and you had to pay quite a ransom, a king's ransom to travel because it takes 30 days, mm. right? It's a 30 day travel. But now with planes, you could go there in, in like an hour and a half, right? Mm. That's the natural evolution. So, and we don't have to say, hey, we need to still go back to that and worry about those people. We have to move forward. Yes. It's a fundamental yes. shift, right? And that's yes. why AI art is shifting the pencil to brain related art. So I'm saying you don't need to know the fundamentals of putting a pen to pencil. Because if you understand how your brain can create art and how you can generate art through your mind, that is actually going to take our art to another fundamental level. But this comes Not back to Jay's argument. any pencils. <laughs> but this comes back to and Jay's pencil. argument. Would you, would you then take a train or a bus made by someone that doesn't understand how trains and buses fundamentally work? And yes, it might look visually appealing and cool and works for a few days, but then fucking blows up because it's badly wired or configured. Whereas someone who understands that process is now it's a system that will last for a long time and enable a lot more people over the long run. No, we that move forward. Is more we move so, forward. Yeah. Like, the, like the pilots. Pilots don't care about how buses work, I'm sure. Yeah, but you, you've got a plane that is made by people that understand how planes work, like, or even like technical people, not a person that's like, hey, listen, I came across this tool recently and it's created this plane. You know, it might be cheaper. But I wouldn't trust that system until it proves for now, to work. You see, for now, the same way people yes, don't trust AI art. But eventually, AI tools will create electric-powered airlines much faster and will be more reliable than what the humans created. 
true. And that's But we don't trust day. it. The problem is us. <laughs> we don't trust the system because you know what the problem is? You know why people don't trust AI art? Because it's so fast. They believe that art needs no. to be fundamentally grown and you need to spend years and suddenly within minutes boom you have this piece of art and because it's still so quick it's not art it's too fast that's what is happening the change is so quick that it's ruining their experience of what art is for them which is perfectly valid human process of art is creating art by hand that takes weeks to make which is also art which is also <laughs> perfect so i'm saying that is also art and so is this and that's what i'm saying but the ai art in the future fundamentally will exceed what human art and that is what people don't seem to get Isn't so it? you would put like a future joe soap who's recreated the sistine chapel digitally mm. you would rate them higher over leonardo da vinci who that is the fundamental question of humanity right now the fact yeah, that I mean, he like, took that long to make and fact that this guy could come within a second and create the sistine chapel design in 5 seconds that just shows you how much humans have evolved and we have gone so forward but i believe that is simply a normal part and that's okay is what i'm saying but you didn't answer the question the so sistine chapel rate, yeah. is great awesome art and so is this it's not it's not worse or less because it took less time is what i'm saying Well, time will tell, I guess. <laughs> a friend of mine, he's a good, he's a good buddy of mine. He said, "I want to buy art because it took time to make." And I said, "That is art because you made a definition of what art is to you." I, I, I think there will be room for both in the yes, whatever society we move towards. Yes, that is exactly. That is exactly the uh, argument. I'm in saying in much the same way how we get tailored suits that are like machine made, or they are machine made suits. Mm. there is also a market where people go and hand make you know mm. clothing and that is a niche market for that and it and it still exists so uh, I mean I don't know if you're a cigar guy but apparently handmade cigars are correct, more amazing yeah, than these machine rolled cigars right I don't correct, know yeah. but the one is a, a system that provides um entertainment essentially you know the the person is not like hey I want to know how the cigar is rolled and how it's made and that's why where your argument is coming that I don't need to know about it. I just want to enjoy this mm. this process. But if that machine gives up and <laughs> there, there's there's no machines that can make these cigars, all of a sudden there's a population that doesn't know how to get this entertainment anymore. It's it's completely lost. That knowledge is gone. So yes, we are right now at that 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 gray area that's mm. that's phasing in and phasing out of that that system. But give it a few generations, and all of a sudden it's. idiocracy you know that that movie mm. it's but so jay was talking confusing. jay was mentioning this in a whatsapp chat long ago not not too long ago uh-huh. he's saying why should ai be doing this when shouldn't if we are able to automate and create a life that is free and uh, where we have time all the time in the world because we're not busy working and churning away that we can actually can spend time on art for weeks and months and not worry about things like you said we we move forward and if art is something if painting is something that is in if of interest to somebody they will do it but if it's not of interest then they don't need to do it and they can just order their paintings from you know their their their, their decorations for their home from an ai provider mm-hmm. what ai is prov- it's just like everything like this debate that you're having is the same debate that would be had with any innovation they will be paintings available and ai art is going to be freely available you're going to order it off etsy and you can you know go to checkers and see a collection of ai art and you know just take it home it's just going to be generic art you put on your wall but if you want something more not necessarily fabulous but name brand then you will go to an artist who maybe generates ai art and then works on it or someone who just creates art from real life paint oh my god you know that's going to be like deepu said the the various markets mm. um and in terms of who we are as as free people the artists will keep using finding ways to create art 
like even before AI existed, people were, were, were not just making art out of paint, people are making art out of ice. People are making art out of rice. People mm. are making art out of pretty much everything in existence. Why should they not be making art out of ones and zeros? Yes. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just part of what artists do. People who are afraid of art, who are afraid of the ones who are using rice or afraid of the ones using AI are just falling behind and either need to adapt or, you know, they'll, they'll find their way. Or like you said, they're, 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 they're going to they're gonna fade away and they're going to die out and the next generation of people are going to be born into an AI um, society and not be bothered by those limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, also, everything you said is not AI related, it's human related. The AI is working and, it's, and, and in a lot of ways it's working superbly, superiorly to anything that humans can do. And the only reason it's not more widely adopted is because humans are afraid. They, 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 you know, they fundamentally have a, 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 an ego problem. Hmm. So you're not going to get the taxes automated because automating taxes could be done in a day. And suddenly you've got an entire industry that no longer exists because it's been AI'd. Um, the government can be automated pretty easily. You know, a lot of the decisions made, in fact, would be betterly done with an AI because AI is not going to be overly, cons- depending on, this, is, this, this comes down to that ethical debate, but I think based on what chat GPT is, and if AI can be evolved through, through those types of, of uh, models, it'll be less concerned with money and more concerned with creativity. So profits are no longer an issue. It's not going to allocate money to, if we automate the government with AI. It's not going to allocate money for bigger cars. It's going to allocate money for more homes because that will be the fundamental principles we program into it. That's, that's the AI we'd want in government. That's the AI governments of today do not want. Why, why do so, they want it? You know, we, because it means they will, because they, they, they no longer have power. Because once, once, once you have an AI to do all the work, you don't need people to debate whether it's good or bad to give money to the homeless. AI will just go, yes, it's good. I, I think it's going to be an interesting, positive, serendipitous future with AI. I think it's going to surprise us, but it'll be pleasantly surprising. No, no, I, I think, I think it's, it is valid uh, that we will have both worlds. We're going to have the idiocracies of the world, yeah. but it won't be the entire world. It will be pieces of the planet that are idiocracy and pieces of the planet that are avatar level <laughs> you know yeah. we're, we're we're going that that's what's happening there's part of us going in one direction and part of humanity going in another direction that's right and i don't think i don't think we can prevent both realities from coexisting i think so I, I think it's one of those like you choose like it's like ai art versus traditional art mm. both both are valid existence and amazingly valid expressions of human art whether you use ai tool or yeah. whether you draw it with a pencil and if it takes you six months to make it They are both valid and they both will coexist. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for joining. It has been an amazing chat. And it's Tech Comedy Live over and out.